Hi, Woody. Just how I, tough was that bowling in those conditions on that pitch today? I was, it was hard work. Um, I think if I, if I think about the last pitch, I think this one felt a bit tougher, obviously. Um, it's very rare that you bowl a team out here in two sessions that we did in the first game. So we knew it was going to be a bit harder. But um, yeah, it was hard work. Um, it was nice that we actually got the ball to reverse a little bit. I felt that helped. Um, getting some movement and um, I thought they played well in uh, times to use you know the conditions and it didn't spin as much for us today as what it, it had in the other in the other game so um, we'll be hoping to try and make inroads tomorrow morning yeah how do you make those inroads and how do you take 20 wickets on a pitch like this I think it's a bit of where well, you need a little bit of luck I think um, you need to toil away um, I think the uh, thing we've got on this side is sort of controlling the rate and keeping the pressure on. And I think that last session, we really, um, I think we both 30-odd overs only went for like 70 or something. So um, that's great pressure from us um, as a group. And um, I think if we can keep that pressure on and hopefully then they make a mistake um, and we've just got to keep at it as much as we can um, and keep hammering away and trying to, to force an opening. When you get that open and then the first 20 balls of the new batter is absolutely key, we've got to be right on it. Do you look at this Sri Lankan tail and, and have a little bit of hope? Because it looks, it's, it's, sometimes it's been long, hasn't it? Yeah, um, I think obviously every international team, that's where you hope it. You try and think about the tail because the top order are such good players. So um, we'll be looking to try and get Matthews, who's been a thorn on my side a little bit. And um, I'm sure he's using a wider bat than everybody else. So... Um, we try to get him out um, and then we can try and, you know, ha things can happen quickly here um, when you get when you get on a bit of a roll, especially if it starts spinning. So um, just put in as much effort as we can again. That's all you can do. Keep trying our absolute best um, and try to make things happen. And finally, from me, um, you're going to be rested for the start of the India Tour. This rotation selection policy continues because of the COVID bubble um, that you, you guys are enduring and, of course, the, the huge amount of test cricket you've got to play. I'm just wondering, do, do you buy into that, though, as a player, being told you've got to rest? Is, is that tough to buy into? No, I think it's um, the right decision. Um, I think, you know, obviously, you want to play as much as you can, but, um, you know, with COVID bubbles and things, I think it's the right decision to allow players to mentally get away from it, get back and see families. Obviously, usually... Um, when we go on tours, there's a little section based for getting your family out here and stuff. And um, if you're away January 2nd till March 28th, the whole tour, I think that's like the multi-format players. I think that's a, a long time to, to go without seeing your family and things like that, especially in these tough times. So it's good that they're breaking it up for people and allowing them to to sort of refresh. Um, and then when they come back, they're, they're back into it and uh, raring to go. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, James. OK, we'll go with Dolly and then Dean Wilson. Mark, can you can you tell us how you felt during that eight-over spell? You know, you'd already put a bit of work in. It's back-to-back -back test matches, evening session, and, the, you know, you get you get through eight overs with the old ball. How, <laughs> how knackered? <laughs> Still knackered. Even more knackered. Um, that was hard work, but it was a conversation with Rudy, obviously, um, I wasn't going to come back with the new ball. Um, so rather than bowl, you know, three of us in that spell, then try to come back for three of us, it was probably reversing a little bit and felt like at that time, that was probably when I was going to be most threatening um, and I wasn't going to come back. So it was either come back or keep going and then not have to come back. And when I was in good rhythm, um, I just thought, let's just keep going and see if we can make something happen. My, my head got redder and redder on the screen. So that just probably told you how knackered I was. What, what what did the wicket mean to you? You know, it's it's a team game and everything, but you you were pretty luckless in the first test, and you put in a shift again today. You know, what did it mean to you to actually put one on the board? Yeah, a lot actually, a lot of relief. Um, I felt I bowled decent in the first game, um, and I bowled a good spell in this game, and just thought, you know, it's never going to happen. I was making a joke to John Lewis, the bowling coach. You could be here at 20, 54, and I'd still be bowling from that fourth end and not have a wicket. It'd be none for 3,000. So um, it's nice to actually have one for, um, it might just be one for 3,000 now from the fourth end.
<laughs> Good about cheers, Woody. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well done, Woody. Uh, There's a sort of similar question, really. I, I guess there's been a lot of talk about the mental side of things, the bu bubbles, and um, you know, you've got that sports psycho, you've got the psychologist with you. I just wonder whether you know the best tonic for, for someone like yourself is just getting that that wicket the difference between getting one on the board and not is that the best sort of psychological boost that you could uh, you could hope for definitely I think um, I was um, you know putting maybe a bit too much pressure on myself because when you're in and out the side and you're trying to cement your place and you know that there's people behind you people in front of you who aren't here um, I didn't play much during the summer so I wanted to try and make an impact and then when you leave the game with no wickets um, you feel a little bit under pressure. Um, so it's nice to get one on the board. I know it's not obviously match winning or five fast, something like that. So I've still got a way to go, but um, a bit of a relief. And now I can sort of relax into the game knowing that I've contributed at least. And do you, you must accept though as well that certainly for those of us watching, you know, thousands of miles away, that the amount of effort, the, the, as you say, the red face getting redder and redder kind of shows maybe that your value is not only the wickets that you take, but perhaps the pressure that you're putting on for others to take wickets. Yeah, it's your bowling tandem. Um, we often talk about that as a, as a bowling group, uh, passing on your spell to the next bowler and um, trying to help them at the other end. Um, if I can get the batters um, beans going, um, that then make a rush shot against the spin um, when they're not enjoying it from my end. So uh, um, it's not like I want to, you know, you want to come in and bowl bouncers all the time, but sometimes, you know, it's you might think, oh, it's a bit strange, but actually you're trying to help the guy at the other end and there's more than sort of one sort of trick to it. So um, just try and try, I'm just trying literally my best to run in as hard as I can, wear it as a badge on or out here and give absolutely everything for the team. Um, and if I get wicked or don't get wicked, I can judge myself on how hard I've worked and how much effort I've put in. Yeah, fair play. Cheers, mate. Okay. John and then Chris Stocks, and then we'll finish with Crick Vidu. Uh, Mark, hi. I'm not quite sure if you asked about Jimmy, because I was just called away unavoidably for a second. I mean, it was like a repeat of the first day of the first test with, you know, substitute uh, board for Anderson, you know, three early wickets each and uh, giving nothing away all day. Yeah, um, they're, they're literally a class above. Um, they never miss our length. Uh, the skill level is, is through the roof. Um, it could, I kind of almost believe it at times in, in like how actually good they are until you're up close to them. Um, they're constantly communicating, constantly trying to help. Um, little things, tinkering, trying to get people out, but at the same time giving them nothing. Um, and, you know, just they're just world-class, aren't they? So there's no other way to put it. Can, can you comprehend... Somebody still bowling at, you know, at that level for their country at the age of 38? Well, I'd definitely not be. I, I've, uh, but no, I, I can't imagine. I mean, he's, he's fitter than he ever has been, Jimmy. Uh, worked really hard on his fitness. Same with Brody when um, we've been away on the white ball tour of Africa. They've knuckled down in the cold and um, COVID times and you know, really got themselves fit, um, as fit as they can be. And you know, just they're a great example for young lads coming in the squad of how to keep going longevity and skill level. Um, they've got that all in abundance. That's fine, thanks. Thanks. Stock scene and Crick Vidu. Hi, Mark. I was going to ask about Jimmy as well. Um, obviously, with, with his age, inevitably people always talk about when is he going to go, when's he going to retire. But I'm, I'm guessing as his teammate, you want him to, to stick around right until... The end of this year and beyond. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why that's an issue. He's fit. He's fitter, like I said, than he ever has been. He doesn't talk about or seem like he wants to. He works as hard as ever, and he's putting in the, the effort behind the scenes. He helps the younger lads. Um, I can't really see it, it. It's not really an issue. I know it because of his age. You might think that, but um, he's born as well as he has done. So. He, the injury side of things, I think he's he's been really good there. So, um, same with Brody. Um, so I, I, I can't see it being an issue. It's Thanks. great to have them around. Last one, Craig Vidu. Hello, 
Hello? Okay, we're going to leave it there. See you later, everyone.